Hello YouTube and welcome back to Java. Today we're going to be talking about GUI elements. This is tutorial number 11 and I'm the best Mac tutorials. Thank you for joining me. And uh, so what is a GUI? And um, a lot of people will say, well, it, it's what a cookie is when you break it and you get all that sticky stuff all over your hands. And uh, this is actually, instead of an adjective, this is a noun. It's GUI and it's a graphical user interface. And a graphical user interface is useful for um, uh, an interface between the user and your program, basically to uh, allow the user to uh, input uh, things, commands, actions, whatever, in such a way that your program can uh, react to them. That doesn't involve text-based. It involves text, you know, labels and uh, buttons with labels and stuff, pictures, uh, input of text, typing on the keyboard, but it's not a purely text-based interface where it says, you know, like we've been doing, where it shows up down here in this little terminal here, and it says, like, one, create new, blah, 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 two, delete, blah, blah, blah. Uh, instead, this is a program that, uh, a GUI is kind of a wrapper almost for your program that allows uh, the user the user to interface with your application more easily. Uh, GUIs do take more system resources than a text-based interface generally, although they in the long run are oftentimes better because they're easier and faster for users to get the hold of uh, to use. And uh, when you're developing them, a lot of times GUIs, while they are harder to develop, uh, in the beginning, you know, getting the steps uh, rolling of your program, at some point uh, it becomes necessary to use a GUI. For example, try imagining uh, using Photoshop uh, with a text-based interface, you know, huh, options 1 through 4,000 for stuff you can do, you know, and no picture as to what your image looks like, you're just doing it blind. Uh, you know, there's obviously times where you absolutely need a GUI. You just can't do it text-based or be so ridiculously hard. Like Photoshop, if you're doing the blur tool, you'd have to define uh, vector scapes by using text-based interfaces. You have to tell it exactly what vector space, uh, what kind of uh, vector shapes and outlines and contours you're looking at for a blur function instead of just dragging your mouse across the screen. So uh, there are a lot of times where you just have to use a GUI. Um, but in this case, it, it would actually be more efficient, likely, to use a text-based interface. However, it's a very simple, uh, plain, easy to explain, and easy to understand example uh, that we're going to be starting with here. And so what this program does is if I open it up, you'll see it um, <coughs> gives us, if it ever loads, a uh, little window that has three buttons, make file, delete file, and close program. And so if I click make file, it makes a file called test.txt and fills it with the text the best Mac tutorials with proper capitalization. Uh, if I click delete file, it deletes that file. And it's now gone. If I click close program, it closes the program. So let me just run this real quick and show you that it is actually doing what the buttons say it does. So here's tutorial 11. Here's my folder. Make file. Ta-da! And if I open it up and wait forever for it to open. Ta-da! And then if I click delete file, it's gone. And then close program, like I showed you, closes the program. So we don't need this any open anymore. And um, so let's talk about what this uh, application does and um, how it works and how it accepts input using buttons. Um, and later on in the tutorial series, uh, probably 12, 13, 14, how it uses other things, uh, other input methods such as uh, key listeners in order to uh, get user input. And so uh, let's let's start with our imports because those are actually really important. Uh, JavaX.swing is used for uh, things like the J buttons uh, here. They'll be used for like J labels and things like that later. And they're also used for the J frame here. So uh, if we delete this import, you'll see that those ones suddenly become unable to work. Uh, Java.awt.event uh, importing that whole package. Uh, imports the uh, action listeners and so uh, let's talk real quick about what an action listener is first of all and now um, you can sim you can make some uh, similarities to the human body or to uh, things in the natural world with action listeners basically action listeners are waiting there listening for something to happen they're waiting for a button to be pressed for a menu to be open for a key to be hit they're, they're waiting for something to happen and when it happens they tell the Java program hey you this happened and the Java programs like really cool and then it does something um, so if we go down to the action performed method here and um, uh, look at what it entails it's kind of long uh, just because I have big font here so it's easier to see in the tutorials but basically it um, is a method called action performed it has to be called action performed no other method uh, it is called, I mean, you press a button, Java automatically looks for a method called action perform, that's just the way it is, and it passes it a parameter action event E. 
and uh, this action event is uh, used later on to find out what button was pressed. So when I press any button, any button in the entire world that's on my program, uh, it calls this action perform method here with an action event. It gives it an action event object to uh, look at, to uh, take apart, and to see you know what's going on with that thing. So uh, if make dot equals e dot get action command. Oh, and the reason I'm doing a uh, code like this instead of writing it out is one, this is very long, so the tutorial would probably add like another 20, 25 minutes of me just typing. Uh, but two, I think it's easier to explain uh, the basic elements of a GUI. Um, uh, give a good start, a good uh, idea on it by being able to skip through different parts of the code instead of just going in and you know running, sprinting for it because there's a lot of intertwining here, a lot of things that uh, match together that you have to pay attention to. So uh, that's something to keep in mind here. Uh, so that's why I'm not typing the code out. That's why I'm just going over it and I'm waving my hand like you guys can see it. Uh, that's why I'm uh, going through the code instead of just typing it. I'm just going through it and explaining what things do. So I can go to the imports and I can go to this method, which I probably wouldn't write until almost the end, and then I can talk about um, you know, what what's done when the method's called, and then I can talk about the constructor, and so I, I can just jump around real easily like that. Uh, so anyway, the action performed event, or method, sorry, is called whenever an action event E occurs. Now the action event E are defined up here when we do uh, B1, B2, and B3, these are buttons, dot add action listener this. This is saying a uh, my Java program gets the action events uh, when buttons are pressed. You call me, you tell me when these buttons are pressed. So that's what it's doing. It's adding an action listener uh, of this class, this local class of itself. And so that's very important here. And um, it, uh, action event E has a method called get action command, and that returns a string. Uh, that string is the string that's set up here with the button dot set action command and then a string. That basically tells it, hey, when I click this button that says make file, tell the Java program, quote, make, end quote. And uh, so we'll, we'll go into that a little bit more later. If that doesn't make sense, that's totally fine. We haven't really explained that too well yet. But the action events are uh, basically called whenever buttons press. And then you can look at the action event itself to find out what button was pressed and do something accordingly. Uh, this code should look pretty familiar as far as uh, print writers creating new files and stuff. Um, deleting files, I think I've gone over, but basically f.delete or the file object's name .delete deletes um, the file at the given location. And uh, system.exit0, I think I've also gone over, it just completely kills the program, it just halts it. And 0 means that it exited peacefully. It wasn't an error, it wasn't like, oh my god, out of memory, dies. You know, uh, system.exit0, uh, the number 0 means everything went smooth. And really, I mean, I could put negative 47, four, negative 47 there, it's an integer. Uh, but, honestly, there's no reason to. And uh, during debugging, it's useful to be able to know whether it exited um, when it was supposed to, just because the program's made to exit when they click a button, or because um, at some point in time, you know, something happened that caused the system to exit. And that's where you can look at the error code. Uh, this is the error code. Zero means no error. And any other number but that, um, you put in to mean that something went wrong. So anyway, that's just a common convention. You can, of course, have one be... Die updates, I don't care. Um, I really should do updates. But anyway, uh, uh, system to exit zero... Zero is a common convention for everything went fine. Now, you could put one, and then when you're debugging, just know that one means things are fine, and zero means there's an error. You could also do that, but zero is the convention. Uh, so, create and show GUI, we'll get to in just a second. Let's talk about our main method here. Now, main is what's called when I, cl what's called when I click this play button here. That calls my main class, and from there... Oh, by the way, the X also works for closing the program. I just decided to add a close button, close program button. I don't know why. <laughs> I didn't like just two buttons. I wanted three of them. Um, but anyway, the main method here uh, creates a new runnable in java.x.swing.swingutilities.invocalator. Basically, this looks pretty confusing, but it's actually fairly simple on the surface. Invoke later. Let's see what Eclipse has to say about it. Uh, do run.run .run to be executed asynchronously on the AWT event dispatching thread. Basically, what they mean is uh, when the computer is ready, when everything's all synced up, when AWT is ready to communicate with your main Java program, when Java X is uh, finally rolled out of bed, fallen onto the floor, and stood up, that's when uh, your program uh, is ready to create this, is ready to run this runnable. And so, invoke later just means, hey, computer, whenever you're ready, whenever you have, whenever you're ready to run stuff, uh, 
remember me. And then uh, new runnable. Runnable has very close ties with threads, and you want your GUI applications to be multi-threaded, and a lot of the multi-threading isn't how I showed you earlier. It's either system handled like this, or it's handled in different ways. Uh, there are, of course, the normal type of threads that I showed you last tutorial. I think it was last tutorial. Tutorial number 10 was threads, and this is 11, so it should have been last tutorial. Unless I did like a 10 and a half in my sleep or something. Which probably would have been very boring. It would have just been a bunch of snoring noises. But anyway, this new runnable is uh, closely tied with threads, and it basically is a multi-thread application uh, for running your GUI elements. And the reason, honestly, that you want uh, it to be multi-threaded is because uh, of the user experience. Uh, you want the user, when they click a button, to be able to have things not lag all weird. Now, I'm going to show you a program example in just a couple seconds that, while it does use multitasking, it doesn't use it uh, all that effectively uh, because it's doing something in the background, although it's pretty hard to get around what I'm going to show you is the error, and it's perfectly fine and just means a little bit of button lag. People probably don't even could care less. So, but it is, uh, for a better user experience, is the main reason we do multi-threading. Um, also, I think, uh, anyway, uh, create and show GUI uh, is our method that's called when the run method is called in that thread. Notice thread, run, things should be kind of looking familiar from tutorial 10. Uh, it, it calls this method, and this method creates a JFrame. JFrame is this outer, I should just leave this example up, is this like outer window here? And, uh, Oh, I was going to leave that up. Oh, whatever. Screw that. Um, it's the JFrame, and this, um, it, it's that main kind of frame that just holds all the buttons. And this, uh, this um, text string here is uh, sent to the JFrame during construction, and that's the title. So if I run this, you'd see at the title uh, of the, the window, it would say, The Best Max Tutorials, Tutorial Number 11, in flashing color. No, not flashing colors, just lame black. But anyway, uh, the um, frame.set default close operation is really not necessary here. We could remove that and it just function just as fine. Uh, I left it in here to show you uh, that when we start creating applications that have multiple windows, we're going to be wanting to tell those child windows, hey, when you're closed, just minimize, okay? Don't, don't die. Because if you tell it to close itself, uh, then it'll close the entire program. And so let me show you what I mean here. This is a basic little GUI application I made um, for the P-squared coin cryptocurrency because they were lacking a GUI. They now have a GUI uh, that's just like the standard Bitcoin one. This is the P-squared coin one. As you can see, it has like the transactions tab and everything and all the transactions and tons of stuff. And then they have, um, that's just like the Bitcoin one. And this is the Bitcoin one for anyone interested. So very similar. They're, they're like the same thing. They're made with uh, QT. But anyway, um... Uh, the this was before they had compiled this in Qt and I was like I'm gonna make my own GUI yeah and so uh, this has its own uh, buttons and it's not able to find uh, p squared coin um, see if update fixes that problem yeah it's able to find it basically what it's doing is it's communicating directly with um, the p squared coin uh, text based client because the p squared coin uh, the daemon generally runs as just a uh, text-based, <coughs> sorry, as just a uh, text-based um, interface where you uh, type in stuff and it, it prints out uh, text. So I made a GUI front end to that, where it is instead sending those commands and reading back what comes in. And we'll talk more about maybe how that works at some far later point, uh, creating input streams from process threads. But uh, anyway, these buttons here have graphics, as you can see, which we'll get into. Have J labels, which we'll also get into. Uh, those are probably both next tutorial. And uh, it has a pop-up window that has a uh, chart with um, both uh, key listeners um, for N and C here. Uh, new creates a new ad N creates a new address and C copies uh, the current select currently selected row. As you can see, these are not editable. Editable, which I had to uh, define myself. And this pop-up window, if I didn't do frame dot set default close operation J frame dot I think it's um, hide on close or something like something to that effect. Then when I closed it, the whole application would die. This way, oh, and the reason this button lags is because the calls, uh, the RPC calls to uh, the P squared coin daemon lag. And so, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, P squared coin and Bitcoin and daemons, those aren't related to Java. You don't have to worry about that. That's just what I made this application for. They're completely irrelevant to your knowledge of GUIs in Java. But anyway, yeah. So you can see key listeners here. If I press N, which I just pressed, it comes up with uh, a pop-up dialog. I can type in text here. And uh, it'll close this window and create a new one. 
uh, with the updated information that I added. Uh, send coins is a string of pop-up windows and uh, address once this unfreezes. Address book is very similar to the receive coins uh, interface. Uh, address book it, whoa. Address book is um, uh, two or is one table and it basically just uh, has the same kind of stuff. A adds an entry and um, S sends uh, basically calls the similar things as send coins except with a couple small changes uh, to the selected address. Uh, update just calls the RPC and says, hey, how much money do I have? So that's the basic GUI that I made. We'll be moving towards a GUI similar to this, uh, not for the same functionality, but with uh, pictures, with J labels and stuff in the coming four tutorials. That's 11, 12, 13, 14, and probably throw 15 in there. So anyway, create and show GUI creates our J frame and tells it, hey, when you close, actually close. You know, kill the thread, stop running, don't take up system resources. Uh, then this main class new content pane equals new main class. Main class is the name of this class, as you can see here. And uh, a new content pane, um, very close ties to uh, J frame. Uh, and then we set opaque that it's true. And actually, if we set this false and we run this, you can't really see any difference. I mean, it's not like a very important thing to change at this point in time. Uh, so you can basically just ignore this kind of stuff. And actually, if we delete the set opaque, everything still works perfectly fine. Uh, so there's really not much use for that line. Uh, and frame.sent content pane, new content pane, that's telling the uh, J frame, here's your content pane. Um, so content pane is something that goes inside of a J frame. And frame.pack, uh, pack as Eclipse will tell you, is a uh, window to be sized to fit the preferred size and layouts of its subcomponents. Um, instead of that, later on, we'll probably be making it into a custom size frame, into telling it, hey, this is going to be your width, this is going to be your height. But for now, pack just tells it, hey, you know, be the right size for all the buttons inside of you. You know, look right, basically. It's a uh, cheap way to do that. And to set visible tells it that you want the, the frame to be true. If we put false here, oops, we put false here and run it, you can't see anything because we set its visibility to off. <laughs> so there's not really much reason we want it to be off at this point in time. We want it to be on, so we change it to true. Um, talk about all this. Create and show GUI. When the thread runs, it calls uh, this method here. Uh, the constructor itself creates buttons, or uh, instantiates buttons that were created as class variables here. J buttons B1, B2, and B3. And uh, these J buttons are used, uh, they are the actual buttons here, and this is B1, B2, and B3 here. And um, so uh, equals new J button, and then whatever this text is, is what text it displays. So make file is there. When I mouse over, you'll see a little uh, hint, makes text file text.txt. That's set here, the set tool tip text, and the add action listeners uh, add so that when I click this, it knows I'm clicking that button. And so um, the set action command is the command that it sends when I click this button. It's telling the program, hey, make, 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 like that. And so uh, adding just adds them to the frame. And this action perform method, uh, like I said, is called whenever button's pressed. So it just called it. It just called it again. It just called it again. And it, it called it again and closed the program. So. When I click any of these buttons, this method is called with an action event E. E, like I said, is a method that returns a string. And so make here, this make, means that it's B1. How do I know that? Because the action command for B1 is make. The action command is what uh, the get action command returns. So very straightforward there. Again, remember it's a string. So the string um, comparator operator is dot equals instead of two equal signs. Uh, this does not work. Or that does not work at all. That is uh, not acceptable for that because uh, the way strings work is they are uh, pointers in memory to something. And so it's saying, is that pointer the same as this? Are they pointing to the same thing? And no, they're not. They're pointing to different places in memory. And those places in memory contain the same exact thing, but they're different parts in memory. It's like if I have two identical blue vases with a little uh, panda bear painted on the front, and I have them in my living room, one on a left table, one on a right table, and uh, I can say that vase is not that vase. They're the same, they look the same, they look identical, they weigh the same, they uh, you know, are made out of the same components, 
but they are different entities. So uh, you have to compare them. You have to say, do they look like each other? Yeah. Do they act like each other? Yeah. Do they weigh the same? Yeah. That's basically what the dot equals is. So you can do 1 equals 1, or 1 equals int or a, and then earlier up here have int a. But uh, that doesn't work with strings. And I think I've gone over that before. This code should be familiar, this uh, creating files and doing the try-catch. Uh, if it isn't, go back to tutorial number 8, I don't know, somewhere around there, where we did uh, file I.O. I think it was like hello I.O. or hello file or something like that, hello file I.O. And that's where we talked about print writers and file objects. And so if you don't understand what's going on here, go back to there, and that'll help you a lot with all of this stuff. Uh, delete is just deleting that file instead, and else... Uh, so delete is again the or delete is again the action command set up here on the button B2, and then else if it's not make or delete then it must be close, and so uh, it'll do system to exit zero. It's more um, it, it's kind of nice to do this else because this is like a base case. This catches everything that happens that's not either of those. So if something happens, something really screws up with a button, you know, the action command isn't set right, it just closes the program. Obviously, sometimes that functionality may be absolutely the worst thing to do if it doesn't know what button was pressed. For example, in um, anything to do with, you know, system critical applications, you probably wouldn't want it to do that. However, um, in general, uh, this is a perfectly acceptable way to, to catch any uh, extraneous results with um, action events. Um, or you could have something here where it, you know, makes a new window, whoa, something happened, try restarting the program, or something like that, you know. Um, so I think we've talked about everything, thank you for joining me, and uh, one quick little announcement, I will not be doing any more Unity tutorials, probably, uh, because Unity's being really weird and wanting me to, like, buy it and everything, yeah, like, here, let me show you. If it ever loads. Uh, see, it's like, blah, 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 you have to begin authorization process and your 30 day trial is out and everything and it's like I downloaded the free version and so I might try reinstalling the free version later but if that doesn't work that is the end of the Unity tutorials sorry about that uh, but we will be doing more Java tutorials for sure and thank you for joining me and I will see you next time the source code is all available in a text document in the description below and uh, if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments or send over a personal message Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time.